fortunately, thermal ablations work pretty well, and we can do uh, many things with them uh, with few limitations. Uh, the community, the interventional radiology community, has gotten quite good at applying the therapies that we have, primarily radio frequency and microwave, um, and, and uh, focused ultrasound as well. And, and so I think we've kind of reached a somewhat of a plateau in uh, development of thermal ablation. Um, the main limitations are on the percutaneous side that we have to get uh, needles into the tumors. And uh, many of the complications that we see, of course, there aren't very many complications, but, but those that we see, uh, many of them are associated with the puncture. And so it would be ideal to eliminate the the need to place a needle into the tumor. So that, that's number one. The second is that uh, thermal ablation modalities intrinsically use uh, heat or cold to destroy tissue. And we uh, once we apply the, uh, the radical temperatures inside the human body, we're somewhat at the mercy of physics in that the, uh, the temperatures that we apply at the needle is very hot or very cold and uh, as you radiate out from the needle, we start losing uh, our extreme temperatures. And that is something that is just ruled by physics, not by the applicator itself. And that is a major limitation in that we have minimal control after we power our needle, uh, either heating it or, or freezing it. And so I would say that the punctures and the lack of control are our two biggest limitations that we're trying to overcome with some of the newer technologies that we're developing. What Histripsy is, is focused ultrasound that's applied in very high amplitude pulses. And these pulses are at a low duty cycle. And what that means is that the pulse is on for only a very short period of time, and then the remainder of the time it is off. And so the duty cycle is approximately 1% with histotripsy, 1% or less. And this allows us to get away from heating the tissue. Now, at the focal zone uh, with histotripsy, cavitation is formed, which are basically bubbles that are pulled out of the tissue by very high negative pressures. And these bubbles rapidly expand and collapse, and this causes tremendous stress and strain on the tissues in which the bubbles are being formed. The uh, high uh, pressures uh, that, are, that are formed in the tissue and the high stress and strain from the creation and destruction of these bubbles eventually causes tissue breakdown. And that mechanical force is what we use to destroy tissue with histotripsy. So this is a completely different way of destroying tissue than what we're used to. Therefore, it's not thermal, um, and it's not radiation, um, is a completely different mechanism of ablating tissue, and therefore it has some very interesting properties that, if we're fortunate, we'll be able to leverage uh, to our advantage in treating cancer. It turns out that histotripsy not only releases uh, neoantigens that allow the body to recognize some of the tumor cells that are in the liver or the kidney or whatever target you're, you're focusing on, but it also works well with some of the checkpoint inhibitors and other immune strategies uh, that are, are being developed around the world. Now, this is primarily in animal models that, uh, that this uh, has been, been looked at, and there's still a lot of work to be done, but it is very intriguing to me. And as I look into the future, I wonder if histotripsy will be able to be used in patients with very advanced tumors or multiple tumors that we ordinarily wouldn't be able to treat with ablation. It seems that it may be possible to use histotripsy as an immune primer or as some sort of adjunct with other therapies, which will allow um, our community to be important in treating patients with more advanced tumors than we currently do today.